Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about open-ended winding induction motor. So traditional induction motor, the state winding is connected as Y or delta at one side, and the other side is connected to the grid or an inverter. For an open-ended winding induction motor, the state winding is accessible from both ends. From this figure, we can see that on the left side, we have an inverter which is connected to a DC source. This inverter is called main bridge. On the right side, we have another inverter which is connected with a floating capacitor. So this inverter is called the floating bridge. This is the voltage vector diagram for open-ended 1D induction motor. The voltage vector V1 represents voltage supplied by main bridge. The current vector IM represents induction motor current. Because V1 and IM are in phase with each other, this means the main bridge only supplies real power to induction motor. Therefore, its power factor is 1. The voltage vector V2 represents the voltage supplied by floating bridge. Because V2 and IM are perpendicular with each other, this means the floating bridge only supplies reactive power to induction motor. Therefore, its power factor is zero. The voltage applied to the winding of open-ended winding induction motor is Vm, and Vm is the voltage vector difference between V1 and V2. This is a 5 horsepower open ended winding induction motor with rated voltage of 230 volts. The rated current is 13.6 ampere. The rated torque is 20 Nm. The full speed is 1800 rpm. You can see that this induction motor is coupled with a dynamometer. It works as a load for induction motor. Because mechanical power will be absorbed by dynamometer, lots of heat will be generated. In order to dissipate the heat, a very strong blower is needed, as is shown here. This is the actual power electronics that controls the open-ended winding induction motor. The main bridge is a two-level Three phase inverter, which is located on the left side. The floating bridge is identical two level three phase inverter and it is located on the right side. The open ended winding induction motor is connected between these two bridges. This is the controller for the whole system. It's made by Plex and it is called RT Box. The BNC cables here represents voltage and current measurement from different points of the system because we need uh, feedback information. And uh, the cable here represents the firing pulse for the two inverters. And the cable here comes from the encoder of the system because we need to measure the speed information of the open-ended 1D induction motor so that a closed loop speed control can be used. Because open-ended winding induction motor is connected on both sides, we need two power meters. The power meter on the top is connected on the main bridge side. The power meter on the bottom is connected on the floating bridge side. By calculating the power difference between these two power meters, we can accurately measure how much electrical power is going into the open-ended winding induction motor. This is a controller for dynamometer. It controls how much torque is going to be applied on the shaft of induction motor. It can also measure the speed of the shaft. Therefore, based on the torque and the speed information, the mechanical power that is being generated by the induction motor can be measured. 
based on the output power and input power of induction motor, we can accurately measure the efficiency of induction motor and the different speed and the torque configuration. This is the code that controls the open-ended 1D induction motor drive. It is programmed under Plex environment. You can see that it looks very similar to MATLAB Simulink. And uh, it is very complicated. Why? Because we have 12 IGBTs to control. And uh, in this program, they are actually 5 PI controllers. This is the power source for the whole system. It's 3 phase power with 208 volts. However, the induction motor is rated at 230 volts. In order to boost the grid voltage, I use this auto transformer here. By reversing the input and output connection, I can boost the input voltage from 208 volts, which is connected on the left side, to 230 volts, which is connected to the right side. The 230 volts AC voltage will be connected to this diode rectifier, so that after rectification, the AC voltage will be converted to DC voltage of 325 volts, and such voltage will be connected to the main bridge, which is this inverter. Right now, I have turned on the blower, so there's a lot of background noise. I'm going to run the motor by clicking this button, so that the code you see will be built into the controller. Look carefully at the rotor. Right now, the motor is running at full speed. The motor is now running at full speed with half load. So you can see that this controller can measure the mechanical output from the induction motor. Right now, it is 1.88 kilowatts. I can increase the load torque on the induction motor. You can see right now, the motor is running at full speed, 1800 RPM, with full load, 20 Nm. The induction motor is generating 3.76 kilowatts mechanical power. Right now, I'm going to turn on the floating bridge. Let's look at how much reactive power is going to be supplied by the floating bridge. Right now, the floating bridge is supplied 2.7 kilowatts to the induction motor. Because of this, the main bridge only supplies real power to the induction motor. Therefore, the power factor of the main bridge is almost 1.0. We are now at full speed, full power condition. The main bridge is only supplying real power to the induction motor, as is shown here. The floating bridge is now only supply reactive power to induction motor. You can see from the multimeter that the floating capacitor voltage is very stable. I can decrease motor speed by this button. Right now you will see that the motor speed has been reduced by half. This signal is motor speed. It is reducing from 1800 RPM to 900 RPM. This signal is motor current. This signal is the floating capacitor voltage. You can see there is some transient here. I can also increase the motor speed by this button. Right now the motor speed has increased from 900 RPM to 1800 RPM. You can see this is the speed. This is motor current, this is capacitor voltage. It is very stable during this transient. 